Well, howdy, friends. Brian Flashing and Mad River Outfitters, the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and Ohio Fly Fishing Guides. And we're here today because almost everywhere you look right now, it's pike on the fly. Pike on the fly. Man, Josh, it's a hot topic right now. And so we brought in Ohio Fly Fishing Guides General Manager Josh McQueen, who pretty much started Pike on the Fly here in Ohio. And today we're going to talk Pike on the Fly. All right, Josh, um, tell us about what you use and what you have on your boat with you on any given day when you've got clients out pike fishing or for that matter when you're going pike fishing yourself and then I'm going to tell you about the stuff that I carry with me pike fishing so how about it? Well it seems like Brian we've had a lot of questions lately uh, of, of what to bring and it doesn't seem like it's so simple everybody seems kind of like where do I start you know what do I use but as you can see here it's looking pretty simple right I don't yeah. have uh, 20 gear bags I need to take out on the boat no. uh, I've pretty much laid out everything right here that I need to catch a pike so we've got some of our favorite flies right here that we like to use that we carry here in the shop. We've got uh, a little bit of leader material here to build for either an eight weight or a 10 weight rod, probably our two most popular setups. Some reels to talk about, some rods to talk about. And um, so I'll just cut to the chase here yeah, uh, on the pipe gear. A couple of my favorite reels right here, reels that I have on my boat all the time. The TFO power reel. Um, this is a nine to 11 weight uh, size. So this is a good one to have on the 10 weight rod. And so I would come off of that with my favorite line right now is this Sonar Titan Sync Tip, the Sync 6. Um, this, this line's just so versatile. I, there's so many different things that I can do with this. Specifically with our pike, we're fishing a lot of rivers. And so I'm talking about a lot of steep drop off. So maybe I'm not making a really long cast, but what I like about this sink tip is, is I can manipulate it and pick my rod tip a little bit up if I want to be shallow, but most normally on the deeper drop offs, I can just cast out, put my tip down and adjust my stripping speed to kind of go down those banks. So this is a great line for that. Uh, and then I would go to, uh, on the 10 weight, right here I was running our Rio, uh, actually saltwater tippet, real strong stuff. I kind of like that it's actually a little bit stiffer because it gives me better control to get into tight quarters when I'm making my casts. So for my 10 weight setup, I'm going 50 to 40 and then down to 40 pound wire. And then going with the eight weight setup, um, I really like these reels a lot, the behemoth. I love the super torque drag. I love the way they pick up line. And honestly, most importantly, I just love the cool colors that they have <laughs> in the behemoth right now. Uh, the desert tan, uh, the green, I love them all. I just think they're cool. The orange is a little off, off uh, you know, the wall, but it's crazy. I like it. It's fun. For those looking for um, the TFO power reel is, a, is an expensive reel. It's pricey. Uh, I've got one. In fact, I, I used it. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with TFO. Of course, I love my Nautilus reels, but uh, for those uh, looking to spend, say, less than $200 on a pike, musky, saltwater capable reel, there's hardly any better than the Reddington Behemoth. That thing is uh, by far number one of our best-selling reels and just a, a, just a ballistic uh, fly reel for under 200 bucks. So sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's good. I would definitely describe it as value packed. It's an awesome reel. Yeah. So for the eight weight then going down to, um, I've got my 40 pound to 30, 30 set up on this. So uh, that's 40 pound, 24 thousandths going down to a 30 pound 22 thousandths and my wire and I won't ever go any smaller than this on the Rio wire bite is the 30 pound uh, and that's 18 thousandths. And then from there um, it's just a choice of what flies do I want and I brought in a few favorites here that I really like and let me just start with a classic that I, I don't think you could probably even begin to count how many of these you've seen yeah. with Mad River Outfitters. The figure eight um, awesome fly chartreuse and white that's kind of more like a perch color. Yep. Perch perch imitation. It's just a really versatile fly, a bucktail fly that, um, you know, I can do a lot of different things with that, get it into a lot of different tight places. Very lightweight for the, for the good size profile that it has. And so it's just really an easy casting big fly that'll get you pike. And of course, uh, even plenty of musky, which is what it was designed around. 
Um, and it's not that expensive. It's a relatively inexpensive. Yeah, that's not. Fly. I mean, yeah. considering what the retail cost is on pike and musky flies these days, it's pretty affordable yeah. to get into a good bunch of figure eights. This one specifically I want to talk about is a peacock bass fly, the peacock predator. Um, the reason I like this barred peacock predator is this is a killer fly in clear water. It mm -hmm. looks a lot like a sucker. To me, specifically those stripes, looks like a hog sucker, mm -hmm. which is incredibly common in our streams in Ohio, and it's a favorite pike food. Um, I'm pretty sure that the pike look at a sucker about the same way that I do as a nice big full plate of hot wings. They just love it. <laughs> and so that's an excellent clear water fly. And then also here I've got the gator done. If I want to downsize just a little bit, this is still a good size fly, but sometimes in clear water or maybe sometimes on pressured fish, I find that maybe just to downsize a little bit. Also this fly really swims really, really well. It may not look like much in here, but when I put it like a fast, kind of a strip, strip, quick, and then a pause, that fly really has a nice kick motion to it. And so I really like this. And then I really, really, really am excited, Brian, about this particular fly. Yep. Which you say is a striper fly, correct? I hadn't even seen this fly until you told me about it. Yeah, that fly is called <coughs> the Montauk Monster. And for, for those of you that have seen the video that we did a few weeks back, on uh, pike fishing here in Ohio. I believe uh, I fished game changers. I fished a large feather game changer. And then I fished this red and white Montauk monster. Uh, and I think I caught all of my fish on that yeah, Montauk monster. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Even that, the, the bigger fish that we saw that day was went crazy for this fly. And yeah. what I love about this fly specifically is that big bulky deer hair head really pushes water. But as I make strips on this, the, f the fly really undulates, really wiggles well, and as soon as I stop that strip motion, that fly locks up straight, just like a fish would that's trying to escape a predator or maybe a dying fish. It's got movement under the strip, and then it kind of halts its position. It hovers well in the water. doesn't sink too fast. No. Um, if I want, I can shorten up my leader a little bit and on the sink tip line, get this fly to, to sink a little quicker. Um, or if I'm fishing some shallower water, maybe some sandbars, gravel bars on a cloudy day when those fish are a little shallower, this fly just hovers really Really well. The ostrich in the tail um, really undulates and moves. In fact, you know that fly, even though it's it's tied a little bit differently, that fly is kind of, uh, I dare say, the swimming jimmy of pike and musky flies. And yeah, it was originally designed as a uh, striper fly uh, off, off the northeast. Uh, but we've really uh, taken it under our wing here the past, uh, it's been around for 10 or 12 years here at Mad River Outfitters. Uh, I think it comes in three colors and they're all good colors, but the red and white to me, of course chartreuse, and then having black and purple on some given days is important. But that, to me, that's the swim and jimmy of pike and musky flies um, and, and definitely a go-to. Um, I would say another one that we use uh, a lot is the Whistler, mm -hmm. uh, Blanton's Flashtail Whistler. This is just a great one, comes in two or three good pikey colors. I believe it's on a three-aught hook, and that's another one that can be a little bit easier to throw. Yeah. Uh, that thing is like throwing around a wet sock from time to time, but um, as long as you've got the right leader and you've got the right rod, you can do it. So. Uh, so what are the what what rods are you using? Well, that's the thing. I think we need to cut right to everybody's favorite part of gear. It's a rod, right? <laughs> so um, my my just go to favorite right now is this TFO Axiom Two X. Uh, I just I, I've got this in an eight and a ten, and I really just don't leave without having at least those two rods on the boat, the eight and the ten specifically, in the Axiom Two X. Um, I think we also have the regular Axiom in there. Biggest difference that I personally noticed between the Axiom and the Axiom, or the Axiom 2, I'm sorry, and the Axiom 2X, uh, it seems like this Axiom 2X has a little bit more tip flex in it. Um, but it's, it's a good all around rod to control some of these bigger flies. Um, if, I, if I maybe am into a little bit more wind or longer cast or, or, or uh, the resistance of, say, something like the Montauk Monster, then I might go and prefer my Axiom 2 over that. Mm -hmm. um, but just both of them are, are just good all around uh, 
sink tip slash streamer fishing rods for pike, and I just I won't set out without them. Yeah. Uh, I'm fishing that rod too. Uh, I started fishing that rod when it came out. Of course, uh, our relationship and my relationship with uh, Flip Pallet, who designed that rod, uh, Flip set out to make one of the best uh, fly fishing rods of all time, and he, he certainly did it, and they're available at uh, reasonable prices. So uh, when I'm on the boat with you, and we were up on Lake Erie last week or week before, uh, I had an 8 and a 10. Uh, when I'm, I'm headed to New Orleans here in a couple weeks, I'll have the 8 and the 10. Um, no reason not to. And let me bring up one other point about this rod specifically, too, that I love, Brian, are the uh, recoil guides. Yeah. You know when you're out on the pike boat, uh, things can get a little chaotic sometimes. I love how these recoil guides got some give to them. Uh, you know, sometimes these rods take a little bit of a beating, and um, it's just it's just absolutely an excellent feature on this rod. Um, and, and what also, I guess, else would you point out about that specifically that you like? Well, um, you know, one of the things that Flip pointed out is that even though uh, everybody often talked about larger stripping guides for this type of fishing, Flip uh, actually found out that the science behind it actually says that the smaller stripping guide tightens the energy down a little bit better and the way that these things shoot uh, shoot line is just unparalleled I mean got the Fuji stripper and the smaller stripper which is something that I really really like there's been some question about that yeah I know I know I know it's uh, it's the subject of much debate um, lefty was a huge proponent of 22 mm -hmm millimeter 20 millimeter stripping guides right. um, and for a long time that was conventional wisdom uh, I think we've rethought that mm -hmm. and uh, taking our cues from the uh, from the bass fishermen yeah. you know who have gone to much smaller guides and the theory is that the sooner you align the line with the direction of the rod the better it performs makes sense so uh, a smaller stripper closer to the rod makes sense. That's a, a recoil stripper, mm -hmm. which has a lower coefficient of friction than the ceramic guides, and they're indestructible. I hate getting to a foreign destination and breaking the ring out of a stripping guide. It just, it's happened to me. I did it in Brazil. A, a hundred yeah. times it's yeah. happened to me. I yeah. just, I'm tired of that. Yeah. I've done a few reviews on these rods, and it's just, uh, uh, it's just push button. You just push a button, and as long as you're good at hauling, I would say that, I mean, you're a good caster, I'm a good caster. As long as you're good at hauling and you know that the haul plays a huge role in casting a big fly like this, the Axiom 2X is the way to go. It's the precision push button, point right at the target and go. Uh, if you're not so good at double hauling, the Axiom 2X might be a little bit, or the Axiom 2 regular uh, original might be a little bit better of a choice but uh, no I can't say enough about both of them they're two of the finest fly rods ever made and of course as you know they're reasonably priced yep uh, there's there's other rods out there too I mean you know uh, l let's let's be honest you're on team TFO uh, Echo's got some really nice rods in fact I'm uh, I'm going to take the new Echo Prime down to New Orleans with me. That thing is awesome. But anyways, uh, I want to talk just real quick about um, uh, some of the stuff that I carry with me and uh, on the boat pike fishing, uh, and this will be short and sweet. Um, I started off the day that we were on the water a couple weeks ago with the Scientific Angler's Sonar Titan Intermediate Tip. And with that Montauk Monster in particular, Josh mentioned it's fairly buoyant, and I found out real quickly that this was not good enough. With the Game Changers and some of the, um, some of the flies that are a little bit weighted, you can get by with that intermediate tip, but I switched out real quick. Of course, I had my Omni Spool switch boxes on the boat, and I switched off to the exact line that Josh is talking about, the Scientific Angler's Titan Sink Tip, and go with the Type 6. Um, that is by far the most versatile line. I fish almost exclusively sink tip fly lines, well, almost exclusively, period, when I'm doing this kind of fishing. Um, but having that fast sinking tip offers you the most versatility. I can still fish right below the surface, and you gotta remember this. A sink tip line stops sinking 
the moment you start retrieving it. So if you want to fish this fly a foot below the surface, you can do that. But then if you need it to get down, like you set off some of those drop-offs and some of the deeper holes, you just count it down a couple mics for seconds, maybe throw a mend in there and it's, and it's perfect. Um, so I would say that the go-to um, Airflow also makes the uh, Streamer Max short. Uh, that's also one of my favorites. But the Titan Sync tip and the Type 6 by far. And then of course, uh, I'm gonna run a leader. Here's my leader wallet. This will be in my kit bag. I can build any leader I want to. Fresh water, salt water, it's all right there. Off of Sync tip fly lines, I'm almost always using Maxima Ultra Green. It kits up better with the tip. And of course, off of my eight weight, which is what I used that particular day we fished, I'm going 22 thousandths for the butt section, about two foot. Uh, if, I want, if I want my weakest link to be the 25 pound, I just keep it at three foot, no big deal. Three to four foot is really all you need on a leader off of these sink tips for the most part. And then six to eight inches of the wire. Of course, my polarized sunglasses, my manly pliers, and um, <laughs> uh, don't forget your rain gear. And remember, always bring your rain gear. Did you get everything done? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for a hand. Yeah, well, uh, the heat works great in your car. How come you're all wet? Did you forget your rain gear? Yeah, you don't yeah. want to forget your rain gear. <laughs> I carry everything. Uh, I've got my rain gear, a bunch of stuff in a waterproof bag. I might have a waterproof duffel with me. That's all I throw on the boat. Everything's in there. The, and the only other thing I'll mention is either some sort of stripping guard, okay? Uh, when you're working with these sink tip lines and you're stripping a lot, you want to protect that index finger and having some for, so, sort of stripping guard on your finger or Sims makes these guide gloves, which are cool um, and they can kind of protect you from the sun. And then they've got this protection here on your index finger for stripping through. So, I mean, gee whiz, you can go to madriveroutfitters.com and look at the category of pike flies everything there that uh ailers that gator done that's a great fly that's by pat ailers our good friend up in uh up in wisconsin heck of a pike and musky fisherman um, all of the flies at madriveroutfitters.com and uh, as always if you've got any questions shoot us an email or give us a call here at the shop we're happy to help but josh thanks uh, yeah. i'm sure a lot of people so to sum it up get yourself an eight weight or a ten weight kind of depends on how big the flies are how big the fish are. You're gonna run probably a sink tip fly line of some sort, and you might as well go with the fastest sink you can get. It's the most versatile. You're gonna run a four foot leader. The butt section is dictated by what the weight of the line is. You need to match that up. And then your tip, it will be your weakest length and run six to eight inches of wire. Tie on a fly, and here's the thing. What, uh, we get a lot of people that say, what, what technique do you use for pike? I'm gonna keep this real simple. You throw the fly out there, you let it sink to a desired depth, and you make it swim. There is no secret technique, friends. There's no tips that we can give you. You throw a fly where you think there's a pike, let it sink, and strip, strip, strip. If they don't like that, strip it a little faster. That's Right. I would definitely say that, I mean, every day it starts with me trying different cadences and, yeah. and, and all kinds of stuff. Every day is different. Sometimes they're in a mood to chase it fast. Sometimes they're in a mood for a big, long pause. But I don't necessarily know that every day I go out. The technique, you just make it fishy, chop it up, do something different until you find something they like and go from there. Tie the fly on, take it for a swim. Thanks for watching. As always, friends, we appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned because we're certain to have more pike on the fly coming your way. Oh yeah, don't forget to hit the like button, okay? Josh here, he, he really needs that. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.